So today we're going to start a little series where I'm going to give you some actually useful ranked tips on each of these maps. Now these tips can be used for all ranks by all players on any agent. And today we're going to kick off with Ascent. So the first step here is going to be over towards the B side, and particularly when you are the B anchor coming against a B rush. So your opponents are coming in, you're on the site here, maybe alone on this B site, or with someone else and you're in this kind of position, right? What do you do? Commonly what you'll see in your rank games is that your teammate or yourself will uh, see four people swing around this corner and just, you know, panic, shoot like this and uh, and die and, and, oh, guys, we lost the site. Unlucky. Now, sometimes you'll actually get the inverse of this where, particularly at lower ranks, I think, you might get a killer set up like this on lane, right? And your killer is literally just sitting here waiting to do that, right? And you're just sat in the back of both house, cowering in fear. And if they don't come specifically straight to the B site, then you're literally no use to your teammates whatsoever, gaining no information. So the tip here is to play in a middle ground like you'll see Crashies do right here. This smoke coming through. Crashies oh! Oh, crashies. oh my god. That's so perfect with the frenzy. The now and their turns. Any springboard effect. And Loud just got completely caught in pieces. The timing on that coming through. Huge. So lots of damage done as well. You can see Sadak unless we're taking a chunk of damage. Actually, Crashies. And the finesse reset back towards site now. Yeah, what do we think about the, the no duos spawn. comp on Optic? We'll just wait for some form of contact. True. Oh, creep in this, though. Trying to. Mm, I, I think Victor's their entry on KO, but. Oh, no. That. Loud, wait, what's, what's happening here? Wait, what just happened? They just pushed and killed two? The they triple swung stairs, kill the guy's side. What? Oh right now. So first off, sorry this had to be one of those awful clipped Tarek channels uh, video version of this, uh, but that was the only one uh, I could actually find because they deleted the VOD. But let's take a look at how Crashies is playing this, right, as he ends up getting this ace. So first off, he's being aggressive here in B main, and we obviously know he's about to get two kills as he swings with his frenzy here uh, as they go and try and destroy the Fade Horn thrown by FNS, right? So really good stuff early on, right? He's he's playing it aggressively, and, you know, he he's manages to get two kills and manages to escape as well, right? So this first part is really really nice right yeah, they use the haunt really really good from optic uses his shock dart gets away retreats back to a safe position but he's still up here right he's still playing you know where he can get information just jiggle feed this angle right here obviously saw more people there in b main so he's still ready to take a fight if necessary but then take a look at what happens in just a second because in a second sadak is going to throw his ko knife and that ko knife is going to come and hit both fns and crashies just here right and so they get hit by the knife and so now both of them are worried like hey these guys are going to come and push us right they're going to come up and maybe push the site and now we have no utility right we've both just been suppressed and so take a look at what they do they both instantly retreat to boathouse and this is the tip that i want to give you it's not that you should be constantly playing back here in boathouse but it's not that you should be ever be in trouble here either. You should be willing to retreat, particularly if you are in this situation where maybe you are in a 5v4 in an advantageous situation. You should be willing to retreat back here to Boathouse and we'll see the benefits of doing just that, right? Because as they start to come up here loud, yeah, they're going to come up in onto the site. Obviously, they still have to check all of these angles. They still have to be worried about that, but it's going to give time for rotates, right? This is the crucial thing that when you retreat back here into Boathouse, one, you're safe, right? But two, it's going to allow your team to rotate like yeah as across here so now we just have an extra player then if crashies or fns had died up here right all of a sudden yay still are on this side of the map right all of a sudden it's a 3v1 you're in a lot of trouble and then as we run the clip forward and we end up actually in a 3v3 after after Pankata gets that kill, now we see the second advantage of being in Botas, right? Where Crashies is, you're able to manipulate the angles here to where, look, right, you can swing out one side, not be seen by the other. So he can isolate the fight here from back Botas. It's very easy to do that, right? So he has time to isolate a fight, reload, come back, get another one. And look, every single one of those fights is a 1v1. That is the advantage of being in Botas. Let's stick with the B site, and the first thing I want to talk about is actually plant location, because I see a lot of people planting behind these boxes when you just probably shouldn't be, right? This isn't the ideal plant spot. You should only really be planting behind these boxes when your opponents are actually kind of already out and, you know, could swing you, and so you might be in danger out in the open if you were anywhere else, right? That's the only time you should really be planting behind here. If you've got the full site to yourself, you either should probably be planting in this corner or in front of this uh, little archway here. The reason you should be going there instead of behind these boxes is because you can spam these angles from uh, up at the top, right? So let's say that, you know, the spike is planted in that corner. If your last teammate alive is up here, then they're in a lot of trouble if the spike is planted behind the boxes. They have to come all the way out here, right, to actually find what's going on behind the boxes. But if they... If you plant it in this corner, you can just spam this, 
right? So if you know it's a one v one and they're on the on the spike, you can just spam through this wall, and there's literally nothing they can do, right? And you should be pretty good, particularly if you have an Odin or something like that. You should be good. Or again, if right it's planted from here, again, it's gonna be somewhat spammable. But also, if they smoke you off, right, and you're like back in the back of both outs here, you know, you can just still spam that and be fine. So that's the first thing. Second thing is, if you are playing like more of a backline agent, like a Sova or maybe a controller or something like that, right? And so let's say you've darted for the site and your Correct teammates you. have gone in and let's say they've taken the site, right? And, and you've got the spike down and you're in a good position. You don't want to, and I do see people doing this, ending up in a post plant where you're all in here. Right, where you're all kind of just tucked onto the B site. Maybe someone's in logs, right? But you're all actually on the site itself. That isn't how you want to play this. Instead, what you want to do is have someone in B main. And let's take a look at a DRX round to see the advantages of doing just that. Zest answering right back, and the entry will eventually left. happen for DRX. I would imagine we're going to see some pretty tight angles held here, as you don't want to get into too wide of a position here versus Five players play. with sheriffs really just trying to uh, utilize the fact that you could spray out more bullets in a tight corridor. Yep, Snatch just trying to hide right plus. behind that wall. He'll continue to hold that position and jiggle peek. Force some rifles in hand for DRX. And T1, I mean, yeah, you just got to go in with these trades. Okay, Zeta's good for one. He gets trade back. Now, still no rifles recovered just yet. Okay, now both of them picked it up, but they both get taken out instantly. So as the spy gets down here, we've got Zestus here in B main. And you absolutely see the benefit of being in B main in this post ban. And you see he even avoids this KO knife, which is really, really good. But in your ranked games, people aren't going to be smart enough to throw that KO knife. So don't even worry about it. They'll probably throw it at the back side of Boathouse or whatever, right? And so you will probably go unchecked in a lot of these situations, right? And I know that in ranked games, you're probably going to be more worried about this flank and so yeah that's probably going to come down to you if you do have sentinel utility there to help you out that's uh, that's great but now that this ko knife has gone off and zest hasn't been spotted these guys are in a massive problem right because it's like you have to obviously deal with this you have to come towards the site right that's what that's where the spike is so you have to face that way but now zest is going to pick up an absolute freebie here because you know there's a player who's not looking at him because he avoided that ko knife but then you'll see the problem as we go forward and they even realize he's there you see they, they still smoke it off look at this omen now right you saw that omen just turn around there what does this omen do now the spike is ticking down you know that this guy is gonna do this eventually but you can't really afford to like you know spend all of that time just waiting for him and what if he doesn't do it right then you've just lost the round so it's like this is the problem with, you know, trying to retake B when there's someone in B main and you know they're there, is this Omen basically has to continue on towards the site. But then as soon as, you know, these players start taking contact, that's when Zest can swing and he's going to have a free kill, right? So this is the power of being in B main is that as soon as you see that Omen, it's swing, it's a free kill, right? What does this Omen do? And even if somehow this Omen does swing, kill Zest, you know, hits an unbelievable shot, you know, then Killjoy just swings and again, you're just dead. It's a one for one trade. We're not in any trouble. Don't worry about it. And that's the power of being in B main. Okay, next little tip here is uh, particularly for lower and medium ranks, but potentially even higher ranks as well, is for when a smoke is placed in like this. And you will see this smoke quite commonly, right? Particularly if your opponent has an off and you know you want to avoid an off in mid or whatever. But if you are playing against an omen or brimstone in particular, and you see this kind of smoke as the defender, what you should be trying to do is getting up here, right? Because obviously the smoke will help you get to this point and you can see over a badly placed smoke here and you have to be pretty good with this smoke right you come like on, even if you now. place it something like this you know that you might think is fine you can still see over the smoke and into short right and this is free kills for you particularly if you're playing chamber right and you've got your like your tb yeah. set up in, in here in market and then you know you can come up and walk to this smoke and just get free kills here and maybe then tp out like that's going to be very very good for you so if you are smoking this as an omen or a brim what you have to do is you have to make it almost look like a bad smoke right normally and almost all these choke points you do want to do that but honestly just overshoot it right by a lot if you want to because honestly it doesn't really matter that much no one really is coming swinging out of mid and if you you know just overshoot it there what that will mean is now i can't see what's going on there right so just make sure that you're kind of i guess undershooting this smoke uh quite a, a significant amount really it doesn't even matter like this honestly is better right this is a better smoke than the one that kind of looks better that is honestly better you might say well this gives them a lot of room to potentially play in honestly if they want to push mid like that good luck to them right if you know what you're doing but at least they can't see you on short right at least they can't see you there so yeah with this smoke just keep that in mind and then final tip here you will have seen a lot of people do stuff like this on ascent and see and the different amount of ways in which the loud players have protocols to get him back into aggressive spots. All right, here's a fast B hit. Oh, they are just being chunked out all the way through. Kawasin spamming it through into the grinder. My goodness. And they all topple. 
Mangata just running away, the ace. But the potential's there. At this point, all he's doing is ruining the Twitter clip. Yeah, making it past the 60 second mark, but listen, hunting for it, Hunter's Fury as well. And you will see a lot of people across all ranks type in chat, noob gun, all of this. How do you beat that? Because it can be very frustrating and annoying. Well, Calm is here to give us the answer. Plenty of ults online driver side. That is the counter play, honestly, where Kamazine is placed and stood. And potential there for that to go really wrong. No command. To fly here. Oh, no chance. I'm getting past the choke point. Demon 1 does not step foot into the site. No dart breakers again from EG. The counter spam though, I mean, Kawazin getting a little bit too risky with it.